Most doubles players make the game way too hard on themselves while making it way too easy for their opponents, and a big part of that is where you aim your shots. All of these points have one thing in common. Somebody aimed for the wrong target, which either set up their opponent or resulted in an error. No, nice. Alex, there we go. come on, man. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly where to aim so you can start winning more doubles points and more doubles matches right away. If that sounds good to you, do me a favor, click that like button, and let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into the point examples. And in this point, we're gonna have a server here, returner here, and I'm gonna go ahead and just play the point through first so you see what happens, and then we'll dissect it. Okay, so the theme of the day here is forcing our opponents to hit harder shots, not easy ones. If we can force them to hit harder shots instead of easy ones, then we're gonna be much more successful. So here's the deal, from this position right here, this returning player is off the court, not in a comfortable position at all, hitting, leaning over to the side. He's got two choices. He can choose to hit towards this player, who's also defensive because he's back behind the baseline. It doesn't mean that it's not possible for him to hit a good shot, but compared to this player, who could reach out and touch the net, which of those opponents is in a stronger position to be able to inflict damage on him and his partner? Well, it's obviously the player who's close to the net. They have huge leverage to be able to hit directly at the other side of the court with minimal effort and be able to attack at a moment's notice. Whereas the player who's back behind the baseline has to hit the ball up, use a lot more effort to swing to get the ball over. There's so many different advantages. So if we just look at it very simply, there's two primary choices here. Hit in this direction towards the player who's defensive or hit in this direction towards the player who's offensive. This player's player is defensive. So there's a mismatch here in his decision-making. When he decides to go in this direction, he's hitting the ball to the person who's perfectly prepared and in the perfect position to hurt him for that decision. And I love this example because <laughs> this player just makes it look so simple and so easy. And it just really highlights the, you know, just the fact that it wasn't a very good decision. So in this example, this player, assuming that he was trying to hit it there, which I believe he was just based on, uh, you can just kind of see the intention and, and how much effort there was to direct the ball in that direction. It, there's a mismatch here. And this player is just making the point so hard. You don't have to make it this hard. I know it's tempting to try to hit something fancy or aggressive or impressive. Don't. Just hit the ball to the more defensive player when you are in a defensive position. Now let's watch some high level 4.0 players and we're gonna see very similar decision making. Just to highlight that it happens at all different levels. This player is about to return, this player is about to serve. I'll go ahead and play it out first. Watch watch what happens here. 5-0, that, that is an automatic gimmick. Nice finish, good get. So in this example, this 4.0 level player who's returning back on the baseline has two opportunities to do the right thing and avoid that attacking player. All four of these players have great hands. They've got great attacking games. They have good offense. They're, they love the net. That's why they're high level 4.0 doubles players. So this shot was an attempt to just kind of catch this net player off balance, catch him a little bit off guard. And frankly, he kind of he kind of did it here. You can see there's a little bit of discomfort and ball kind of jammed him a little bit. And so the net player did a great job here, just reflexing this ball back and staying in a really controlled position up there at the net. He's still attacking and this player is still in a defensive position. Again, it doesn't mean that a winning shot isn't possible by this player, but it's just very unlikely given all the challenges that he has to overcome, being this far back and now reaching down in a defensive position. So again, there's two choices here. Can either direct the ball towards the other defensive player or generally, you know, just general decisions here or to the other half of the court towards where the attacking player is waiting. So I know that he didn't want to set up this easy of a shot for that net player, but why even mess with it? Why, why even give him the opportunity when this player could just simply target anywhere on that half of the court? Sure, this net player could poach, but make him have to do that. Don't give him a, a clean opportunity to just try to put the ball away. 
Now let's shift gears and talk about the same principle of choosing easy shots over hard shots, but from the perspective of a net player. So let, I'm gonna go ahead and play this point through, watch what happens. And then we'll dissect exactly what the mistake was here. This happens so much <laughs> for competitive adult tennis players and it just hurts me. It just hurts my coaching soul so much because there's so many opportunities that are just missed. So when this ball goes back to the server, who's in a defensive position and who's in an offensive position? The server is pushed way back behind the baseline. He's defensive. We have a defensive player back over here. The returner just stayed back behind the baseline. And then we have two attacking players, net and net. So when the serving player hits this and gives a high, easy forehand volley to this attacking player, what choices does he have, generally speaking? He can direct it back here to this player who's what? Defensive. Well, if you're going to attack, why would you want to hit to the person who has more time more space, more resources to be able to hit the ball back. Not to mention his feet are out of bounds. It's impossible to hit a ball at his feet because that ball would go out. So the other choice this player has is to hit anywhere over to this side of the courts. And A, we've got a gigantic opening right in the center of the courts, which is a, a huge problem for these two players. So super easy target. And then B, there is a player over here, but his feet are in bounds and easily accessible. Any shot that landed in this area with a decent amount of force just wins the point outright. And yet this player decides to go back to exactly the wrong place by hitting it hard and right back to the defensive player. And this is what you get. When you hit a hard offensive shot to the defensive player, the defensive player is going to hit a defensive shot. And so that resets the points and wastes the opportunity. Here's another example of a net player wasting an opportunity. Watch this point play out first. So again, it's hacking opportunity. And where does the ball go? So this time we've got a defensive player here hitting to an offensive player on the other side. This is about as easy and juicy of a, of a volley as you're gonna get in doubles. This player is close to the net, the ball is high, he has another net player right here, right in front of him. If you just put yourself in the shoes of this player, what you're thinking in this moment is, oh no, like you're just right in the sights of that, of that attacking player on the other side. Plus, we've got a big gap again here in the center. So there's all kinds of opportunities over here on this side of the court. Over on the other side of the court, we have a defensive player. Somebody who has much more time to respond, whose position is out of bounds, or it's close to out of bounds. And so you can't really target that person's feet, unlike this person. And so there's no benefit, there, there's no advantage to hitting the ball in this direction. And so this attacking shot bounces short and just sits right in the strike zone of this person who's back behind the baseline. And so he's able to step in comfortably if that exact same shot gets aimed anywhere over in this direction, then the point is probably done. And the nearer to this net player it goes, the better because that net player has little to no time to react to the ball. But instead, it goes perfectly back to the baseline player and gives the baseline player just a, a really easy crack at it, like right in his strike zone, and he attacks and steps in and puts the ball away. So again, clear opportunity here, and there's a choice to be made. And this is happening in your matches constantly, where you have the choice between easy or hard, and players choose hard all the time. So what's the big deal? Why do I keep harping on this easy versus hard thing? Well, these statistics show the reason. Big thank you to Warren at tennisanalytics.net who put together this data of ladies 3-5 players, ladies 4-0 players, men's 3-5 players, and men's 4-0 players. And after studying thousands of points, you can see that best case scenario, about one out of five points is ending in a winner. That's the green bars. And the other four points out of five 80% are ending with somebody making a mistake, receiving the ball and not being able to put it back in play. So over the long run, over the span of an hour or an hour and a half or two hours of doubles, if you're consistently making decisions like these from the baseline or the net, 
and you're choosing the hard shot instead of the easy shot, your chances of making errors or being the one on the court who's making the error goes way up. And that just makes being successful at doubles extremely, extremely difficult. Now let's look at some high level players making good decisions in action, in real time. Let's go ahead and look at this example first. These are three current college players. They're all 5.0 plus level players. Watch this point play out. And the person we're really gonna be paying close attention to is this one on the other side, about, about to hit the return of serve. So watch this point. So isn't able to avoid the net player on his no. first shot. Alex, come on, man. Avoids him on the second shot and then wins the point by by drawing an error out of the other team. So notice uh, right here, out of the eye formation, he's trying to avoid that net player and avoids him just enough that this isn't a put away shot. So net player here had a chance, but couldn't quite put it away because he was off balance and kind of reaching and stretching a little bit. Look at how both players are covering the middle, by the way, not the topic of this video, but look at how they're leaving the alleys open. They're not concerned about the alleys, even though this player over here is extremely talented, has tons of weapons, but that's, that's not today's topic. So this ball goes back to the returner and now the returner has a decision right here. He's back in a relatively defensive position. Yeah, he's stepping inside the baseline, but compared to this player, he's very defensive. The player on the other side is super close to the net and in a very threatening position. So he has a, he has a choice here. He can either hit it in this direction, that's the hard shot, or he can hit it in this direction, that's the easy shot. That's targeting the player who's also in a defensive position and it's gonna give him time, he understands that, and give him space to be able to operate in this point. So when he avoids that net player and he hits it back to the other baseline player, he comes in and now look at how the tables have turned. Now he's in an offensive position because he's come forwards. Meanwhile, he's fed the ball to the defensive player on the other side. And so he's turned the, the tables now by being patient and avoiding the offensive player and hitting, hitting it to the safe spot, the easy target on the other side. Now the player in purple has a choice. Either try to hit to a safe, easy target or hit to an attacking player. He's way too smart to just aim it for no reason to the attacking player. So he tries to avoid him. And in doing so, a mistake happens. Look at how the returning player on the other side, look at how he moves towards the middle, tries to pressure. And so the player in purple makes a mistake. Not because there was some like big scissor kick, like jumping, like overhead, like winner. This is how most points are won, even at 5-0 level of doubles and above. It's by pressure. It's by smart targets, applying pressure using your position and then waiting for the error from your opponent. They're not trying to be heroes here. They're playing the easy, safe, smart shot and then pressuring the other person to say, okay, can you do the same thing? And over the span of an hour and a half or two hours of leaning on their opponent, they're hoping that more errors come from their opponent than from them. But if they start going rogue and going for hard shots and setting up easy shots for the opponent, forget about it. Success is extremely hard against this quality of player. Now let's look at some good decision-making from a net player. We're about to see two back-to-back -back points where we focus on this player in both points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let both points play through and keep an eye on the player in that position in both points. Look at the targeting that's taking place here when there's an opportunity. Good move, Sorry. good move. So now in these examples, we have a clear we have a clear mismatch where we've got a returner. That's somebody who's defensive back here behind the baseline. And when that player can't keep it away from the really active net player on the other side, that net player has an opportunity here, close to the net, high contact point. And so now, remember back to the 3035 players and the, the 40 players, they had this same kind of opportunity where they had a choice to make, either the easy target or the hard target. They can either target somebody who's close to them with very little amount of time to react with their feet right in the middle of the courts or hit back to the defensive player with their feet outside of the courts. You're very, very rarely gonna see these players at this level make the mistake of going in the wrong direction and going to the exact wrong person. By the way, I'm not 
necessarily condoning like you try to hit your opponents, but in good doubles, it does happen. And frankly, it's just part of the game when you go in the correct direction and you have your opportunity and you go towards the player who can't respond to it nearly as quickly. If you enjoyed this coaching, make sure to go to textbookdoubles.com where you'll get more insights to help transform your game and make the game easier for you and harder for your opponents. Thank you so much for watching today. Take care and keep up the amazing work on your game.